summer up here and during the winter they will be south on their breeding ground on much calmer and warmer waters and their breeding grounds always need to be down south because when the cows are born they don't have the deep layer of fat the blubber that the adult ones have so they wouldn't survive off on these cold waters so they are born in the south on much warmer waters they'll be drinking the milk from the mother which is around 60 percent fat and they can drink around 100 liters a day so they'll be they'll start gaining weight really quickly then in the end of the winter they'll do the migration up with their mothers and it's the most important part of their lives because it's when they'll learn from their mothers where to come during the summer where their feeding grounds are by up here we end up not seeing the small babies those ones will be south although we get a few times the juvenile the summer goes to land for their breeding season and then the rest of the year they'll be out in the open ocean without even seeing land although there are still a few around the puffins are these black and white birds with a very colorful beak they'll be nesting on the cliffs on the soft rock doing digging their nests with their beak and their feet and the nest can be around one meter long but they will always be very fancy because they will always have a toilet inside. So they will make one hole for the egg and another one on the side for the toilet. But there's a reason for this because when the pufflings hatch in the beginning of June and the puffling is a lovely name for the chick of a puffin, they stay in the nest until now, until the mid end of August. And during all that time they need to stay clean or they'll have problems growing their feathers so they'll have a toilet on the side to be able to go there and back to the nest also the puffins will only lay one egg per season and if the mating is successful they'll stay together for life so they'll be both cute and romantic if the mating is not successful they'll mutually decide to see other puffins so very sophisticated as well they might seem a little bit clumsy trying to take off the water because they need to run although once they are flying they can flap their rings around 400 times a minute and that allows them to reach a speed of 50 to 55 miles per hour which is a, around the 80 to 90 kilometers per hour and the one okay we had one puffin ahead of us with lots of fish on the beach they can also dive to 60 meters, so they go very deep and for a maximum time of 2 to 2.5 minutes although on average their dives are around 20 seconds long back around 1 o'clock on the right side that stuff is there ahead of us with the deep full of fish
again. And there it goes. Ta-da! Get it. Okay, so when they show the tail, we know they are going for the deeper dive. They'll be using the tail as a weight to help them go down easier. So again, a few more minutes before it's back on the surface. But this was a lovely humpback whale. And also this mark that you can see here, it's called the fluke print. So when the humpback is going down, the movement of the tail with the water displacement will form this smooth circle. And we know that this will always mark the spot where the whale was last on the surface. And when they are swimming close to the surface many times they will start forming this as well and we will know that they are always ahead of the mark.